So this is the November 6th Development Review Board meeting for the City of Montpelier. Um, we'll call this meeting to order now, and we're going to give Meredith a few minutes to explain remote uh, meeting procedures, and then we'll go back to our topics. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Justin, this will be for you to pay attention to because it talks about how, how to interact um, in the meeting, but the share screen part is really for anybody who is watching from home on Orca Media. Um, but then there's just part of my spiel to listen to. Um, alrighty. So, <clears throat> For anyone watching tonight's Development Review Board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's discussion via the Zoom platform through either video or telephone access options. So you can type this link into your web browser and it should bring you right into the waiting room and I'll get a little notification of that and let you into the meeting. Alternatively, you can dial this phone number and plug in this meeting ID. Um, and I'll get that same notification. If you're trying to get into the meeting and having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, and I'll be monitoring, monitoring my email throughout the meeting um, to keep an eye on that. Um, for those attending via Zoom, turning your video on is optional. Um, we don't really have any members of the public on tonight, but if anybody watching via Orca does come on, please um, make sure to keep your microphone on mute. And um, you may actually not even have an unmute button. It may be that I have to ask you to unmute before you can do so. Um, so if you wish to speak when you come on, please raise your hand um, and then I will make sure that you can talk once the chair has called on you. Um, please be patient, raise your hand. You can either do it physically if you're on video or you can raise the, use the raise hand button. Um, or if you're calling in on the phone, you can do um, star nine and this will give us a little raise hand um, and we'll get you in the queue and then call on you when appropriate. Um, in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, and I would get notice of that via my email, um, the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Thank you. Um, so I think without further ado, maybe let's start with our uh, first and only application this evening, uh, which is by Justin Dreschler. Um, at 22 Liberty Street. Uh, I think if we can just get a brief summary from Meredith, just a sort of technical, what is this? I'm sure everybody's read it. Oh, I'm sorry. I've jumped in too far. We need to approve the agenda. Uh, can I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move we approve the agenda. Great. And a second? I second. Great. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so, um, Marin, if you want to do just a um, very short. Uh, oh, can we oh, vote? No. <laughs> Got to vote. No, vote <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. All, all those in favor of approving the agenda? Yes. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? I think it's Sorry. a fine meal. No, it's okay. It's totally fine. Um, very funny. Uh, so now, Meredith, do you want to. <laughs> uh, so this is. Very brief because it's it's pretty straightforward. Um, applicant wants to build a carport um, and to fit the size carport that they want to be able to cover two cars in the space that they have. They're asking for um, three variances. So a side setback and a rear setback variance as well as a variance for the coverage max. Um, none of the um, setback locations that they asked for or the um, addition of coverage um qualify for waivers they're just they just don't quite fit in the boxes um <clears throat> and so the the key thing here is for the board to determine whether the requests being made fit the variance criteria and i've tried to chart that out for everybody um and i really couldn't i couldn't find a way to make it fit um but the board is the one who makes the decisions so okay. if you can find a way to make it fit explain it in a way I can write for you. And <laughs> that's what, that's what we're, I think we're looking for. Okay. Or not. Um, that sounds great. Um, Justin, do you want to just kind of give a, like a very quick overview of what you, what you are requesting here? I mean, or why or maybe? Sure. The, uh, the 
22 Liberty is the property that I own that is rented to a family of Afghan refugees in town. It's actually two families that live together. It's two brothers and their um, all their children and their wives, so about a dozen of them that live there. They both uh, leave for work very early in the morning. Shah Muhammad leaves earlier than four o'clock in the morning. And he had asked me at some point, can I put a cardboard in? I mean, he didn't say it in those terms. He said, can I can I make one of these and pointing to a picture? And um, they said, can I put this in uh, so that I don't have to clean off my car after snowstorms at you know whatever time, or even not even after snowstorms, honestly, it just being like a little bit icy or a little dusty for a few inches um, at four in the morning. And I said, yeah, sure. And that was before I realized that you had to get permits for such things. So, um, so anywho, they actually, they started framing it out, which I didn't even know they were capable of. I thought that there was going to be a, um, I thought that we, he, that we were going to have this like long discussion about what it was going to look like and stuff like that. But they, they are fast workers. Um, when I saw they started to frame it, I froze them and I started this process. Once I talked to a couple people and realized I needed a permit, um, in terms of the variance, the, uh, I mean, it really is just a like a practical consideration, the driveway is narrow and then it gets a little wide. You know, it's one of those standard driveways that gets, you can't pull two cars in at the exact same time. You have to, you pull them in and then you, and then you pull out. So it would be tandem if not for that extra spot over here. And the setback request is such that we can still build it in the space where it's wide enough for two cars without running into the house. Uh, the side the side setback request is actually just because, um, well, actually they're both for the same reason. The side setback request is basically just exactly to the driveway line. So the driveway line is three feet, four inches um, from, the, from the fence. So it's like fence, three feet, four inches to the driveway. And then this is all grass. And then, um, and then over here to the, um, to the house, I mean, it's basically like going to be right against the house. And so if we offset this another one foot, six, one foot, eight inches, it's going to be close. Um, as far as the back setback, when we pull it closer to the start of the driveway, so insofar as we move it further from the backyard, we run the risk of running into the, either running into the, sh the shallow part of the driveway, excuse me, the narrow part of the driveway, or running into the house because it's, you know, it's got a bay window there. It's definitely possible that I could squeeze another foot, foot and a half out of this thing. And I'm happy to build it as close as I possibly can to the guidelines, but I don't think 10 and five are gonna work. Okay. And then as far as the, um, as far as coverage goes, um, you know, I know that the compacted dirt isn't really gonna, isn't gonna save us with the porous material type stuff. But um, a, a very small part of the cars would be parked on dirt. If any, actually, the carport would extend onto the dirt. But they, they, the frame is large enough that they may not actually need to go all the way in. Um, anywho, so that's the um, so that's the whole deal. The other thing is there's a pergola that clearly doesn't meet um, zoning at the house next door that I could reach by just reaching over the fence that has no practical use. So as far as consistency, I don't know if they just didn't permit it or what, but, um, but I mean, as far as consistency goes, um, if they can have theirs, I feel like we should have ours. Well, I think that we're not really in a position to evaluate how that happened, you know, whether yeah, it was permitted yeah, yeah. or not permitted. I um, hear yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I think, I mean, to me, it seems like the meat of this question really uh, is the four criteria that uh, that uh, Meredith set out. Um, and I don't know, if people have other questions about the application. Do we want to go over those first, or should we just jump right into that? I think we can go look at the, those criteria, and I think that will spark some good discussion. Okay, that's yeah. that's what I was thinking. Is that we should just sort of go to that point. Agreed. Um, one question. Yep. Um, I I see the map. I've actually pulled up Google Maps myself. I see the image. I just think it would be helpful if someone could indicate in plan where this is designated to be in that street view. That's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, and I maybe. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Meredith. I hadn't gotten there yet. Okay. Thank you. And the <clears throat> the home footprint that we're seeing for the existing house, this is includes or does not include the bay window. It doesn't. It's not perfect. The, that's my fault. This I I in fairness to me, this is a great job by me. This is my absolute best work. But um but I'm not an architect. Um, this is my first time doing this, so it does not include um, doesn't include the bay window. But if you look, so the corner of the carport, um, the bay window is going to be a couple feet um, in the southerly direction. Well, actually, it wouldn't be south here; it'd be west. But you get it, the down direction. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else in here we want to talk about before we get to the criteria. Um, I really do think that's the biggest, the biggest ticking point. I guess. Um, let's let's start at the top then. Uh, board to determine what physical, uh, unique physical circumstance or condition of the property are creating an unnecessary hardship. And I think that one of the issues that we need to talk about is what is an unnecessary hardship um, and how we define that. I think that's pretty relevant in this application. Uh, thoughts from board members about that? Yeah, I guess um, one question that comes to mind is the width of it. Um, is this designed for two cars side by side um, or um, yes? Okay. Alex? I have Thank a, you. I mean, a third to half the houses on Liberty Street don't have any cover for their cars. So I have a sort of question about how we're defining unnecessary hardship. Um, I mean, I've lived here for 50 years. I have never garaged my cars, but I'm not a good, <laughs> I'm not a good example. I've had outbuildings, but not for my cars. <laughs> um, so, I mean, what are we calling an unnecessary hardship? I, I think the applicant in this, in this case made the point that it was um, getting up really early and having to clear snow off the cars was the hardship. Is that correct, Justin? Am I getting that right? It is. It's the it's the hours that you know they're for. I mean, Shah Muhammad in particular is forced to. He's not forced, but I mean he's more or less forced to work those hours because he can't work on Friday because of his religion, and so he works these eleven hour shifts at darn tough. So he has to start extremely early in the morning, and so yeah, I mean that's what that's what I that's what I would pitch the hardship as. Um, generally, I mean I consider it a pretty significant hardship for the family. Um, and so there's also just a hardship generally with regard to um, having to feed and house 12 people. And um, I don't know, just like um, navigate through the world in a way that is difficult. And so it's, you know, the easier that we can make it on these guys, the better. I think everybody's heart is in that same reaching, place with you. Certainly reaching, I know. But um, but our our mission here is always to basically follow the zoning regulations in a way that does make them consistent, and so that's our struggle here. Not that there's any question about their deserving of a carport. Yeah. You know, that's that's fine, Brian. Oh yeah, I just I guess this is more of a question, um, but I guess I'll just propose it as a statement. I think um, maybe the definition of hardship is also something that would fall upon the homeowner and not those who are being rented to not that that's necessarily an important distinction to make but it seems it seems that's probably what where the definition lies meredith wants to respond to that yeah meredith um so uh, just a note so when you're in vermont when you're in i i should have pulled more of this probably to put in the um staff report to be sort of a primer on variances but one of the ways to think about what they're talking about, about the unnecessary hardship, is it's an unnecessary sh hardship created by the local law, right? So the the 
the setback requirements or the coverage max requirements are creating an unnecessary hardship and that's combined with the unique features of the parcel. Um, it's not necessarily about the separate hardships that the applicants are um, dealing with for why they're asking for it. It's the, for, for the thing to be put there, it's the why they can't comply right. with the requirements. Other physical constraints on the site. Right, that make yeah. it so yeah. that they can't comply with the zoning requirement. Right. And the failure, inability to comply with the zoning requirement is sort of the the hardship. Okay. So if well, I, I think someone asked a good question earlier. Uh, oh, sorry. I see Alex has her hand up. Um, just squeeze this in there to reiterate what was asked. But the question was asked maybe by Rob. Is this a two-car garage or one car? Right. I definitely think that's port. right. And uh, Alex? Yeah. I was going to make a similar point that had this application come to us clean without a structure already having been started, right? And we were considering this, we might have gone down the pathway of a one car garage of something 12 feet wide instead of 19 feet wide, right? Which would, in which case, there wouldn't be a hardship. When something's right. been started to be constructed, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who's talking? Brian? I have a question. Uh, Alex just said something has already been built. Yeah. That's they, a, um, before I realized there was there was a two-part problem here. Number one, I didn't realize number, that we were going to need a permit generally and that there might be a variance. And two, I had no idea that these guys were going to build this themselves before we had a lengthy discussion. So they asked me the question whether they could Get, could have one of these things and i said sure as your landlord I don't, I don't care at all and then within like 48 hours they had framed something out so um what are the footings that's yeah. a good question i that is i i i'm oh, sorry so i I guess the, the issue before us is really the variances and we, you know we can we can talk about the footings but I don't think they're super relevant to what we're trying to decide here right. so um I, I agree with you I just wanted to make the point to understand because I was catching up with narrative here about how substantial what was there is and the simple answer is if it the footings are not substantial then it seems like it's easy to suggests that this thing may shrink a little bit to start to conform, uh, if not completely uh, conform a little better. With, yeah, there are no, with so zoning. Brian, if you're asking, there are no poured concrete footings in place or anything like that, if that's what you're asking, like unmovable okay. poured concrete footings, no, no, no. Okay. okay, thanks. Meredith? Meredith? So, yep, so just a reminder, the board's job is to approve or not approve the request if it comes down to redesigning it to fit the requirements um justin can can come to me with right. a a permit like if he, they decide to instead of having it be side by side parking have it be one in front of the other tandem parking in a longer carport i mean i know it's a it's a pain to take down what's there and build something new but they could do that with an administrative permit, but they're trying to get this side by side right now. So that's the question, whether or not the board is willing to authorize right. that requested thing that's already started to be built. I understood. And I think all I was trying to clarify moving forward for everybody else is in approving or not approving, can we make a similar recommendation that, that you just made, which is to say this no, won't no, we work, can't. but right. this will work. No, right. No, that's what we can't do. We can't. We can't. Kind of. I mean, we can talk about like, would it be acceptable given the current regulations if they were to build a different size thing? We could talk about that, but right. then they have to come back with the application. We can't. We can't sort of step in and say you need to move this this way and this was this. You know, I mean, it's. it's right. I it's, understand. I mean, we can tell okay, them good. that no, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't it's like important that we don't cross hairs here. I mean, I think. For the benefit of everybody, I think it's the right call to deal with this, or at least try to deal this with this as a permitting action and not an enforcement action of something that happened. And um, we we're in the process of, of dealing with this as a 
as a permitting action, um, which is the the cleanest, best route. So we need right. to not not mix <laughs> the you know what happened with the enforcement you know side of things since we we've, we've chosen yeah. this path. And hopefully, we don't we don't go the go the other way. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I only have one last question and I think I'm done with questions. Uh, first of all, I totally agree with what Rob just said, and I don't want there to be confusion about what my perspective is here. But second of all, I, I guess um, what Meredith is saying to clarify Meredith is that there's no saying the carport works in X and Y. It doesn't work as proposed. It's really just yay or nay and then a new application comes forward is that correct um if it, unless you're saying we approve it with like a one foot change on one side right so like you could you could say mm, this variance is too much we're just going to shift it a little bit and make it a little bit smaller that's kind of it's still a little gray but that could be done you can't say okay change the design make it tandem like you, that's that's not something you can do. Or you could say, "Hey, we approve this size, this variance to the to the rear. We don't, you know, or we approve the coverage variance. That means the setback doesn't, right. right? And then they could they could come to me probably with a, you know, meeting something. But it's generally it's yay or nay to what they have. Generally, okay. there's not tweaks because this isn't something where it's can conditioned on like putting up screening right there's some things where somebody's making a request and you say oh, okay but you got to add screening here right that's a well, little different versus alex, redesigning i got you alex has a question i see and then i guess i just have one more final clarifying right. thing. then i won't have any more i promise so <laughs> alex I make no promises, but I do have a question. And since we're fielding sort of general questions, and that is, what are the plans for snow removal? Because when I Googled this site, the snow removal it was a winter image, and the snow removal was all toward the back of the property where the carport is proposed. So, do we, is that germane or not? Is that a question for me or no? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I if think you there's can... plenty. There's plenty of room to toss the snow in the backyard outside of where the carport would be, and there is. I mean, if they choose, there's room to toss it on the side of the house and on the um, on the. I mean, on both sides of the driveway, you've got maybe I don't know on one side is what is it six feet and three feet on the other side, okay. and there's so, quite a bit of room in the back. So hand shoveling it would work. It just wouldn't work with a plow, which was clearly how it had been done in the image. Oh yeah, these these guys aren't going to plow anything or have someone plow. They're all they're they're hand shovel guys. Well, they'll yeah. I mean I'll get them a snow blower, but um, but yeah. Okay. Um. So where does that kind of put us? I mean, I think that I mean looking at the definition of um, unnecessary hardship, it does seem like there is room to say there that the size of the lot um has created uh you know and um has created the reason for this the request or this waiver i guess um i guess uh have you have you thought about um making it comply justin yeah yeah have you sure um, I think and, and, about it every single day. <laughs> have you, um, do you, it, it just didn't work. I mean, you couldn't do a tandem thing. I mean, I'm just, I'm curious, like, no, we can do it to know there. I mean, if you deny it, I'll find a way. It's not like, um, you aren't ruining my life or ruining somebody else's life. If you deny it, you deny it. It's, um, it, it is what it is. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll do it in compliance with the law. I do have respect for the law. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I, um, <laughs> I think unfortunately, uh, I'm not, I'm not seeing the variance criteria here met. I mean, we don't have to go through all of them because I think, you know, one of them doesn't work then <laughs> essentially, uh, you know, whether the others work or not. Um, I, I yeah, I just, I'm, the information as presented, I'm, I'm not seeing, uh, the hardship argument, um, I think, um, you know, maybe some things that talk about talking about things that would maybe change my mind, but would require different information um, or, you know, thinking about how at least having, you know, a parking space in the name of, 
you know, maybe a sec accessibility. Um, I remember we, uh, you know, it was a different, different situation, uh, but we, uh, we had a covered uh, trash area that, um, you know, I think was, 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 was a unique situation uh, where it was, you know, very close to the public right away, not something that uh, really fit squarely in the regulations. And we were able to sort of, I think, make it work in the sense that, uh, you know, elderly people going out to put out their trash um, and having a covered area so they're not slipping on the ice, um, I think was a was a reasonable logic in, um, you know, approving a very, I don't know if it was a variance, but, but you know, deviating from, um, you know, the regs as, as printed um, to do that sort of thing. Um, and so I guess what I'm seeing here is, is a is a concept that could work um but uh you know I, I think that maybe if i were in the applicant shoes and hearing the discussion right now i might consider uh you know asking for a chance to <laughs> take another look at this and you know maybe and come back um maybe with some, some tweaks or different information and not uh i don't know i guess furthering this discussion <laughs> with us you know, you know trying to redesign this or you know tweak it or make it fit i'm, I'm not seeing it okay. uh fit from what i see right here it's just Thanks. that's just one member Catherine, i was gonna i was also thinking back to the um that was the variance request whatever it was a year and a half or so ago with the um kind of trash area and the the covering i was going to ask meredith if you had anything easily to hand on this that you could share regarding the situation because that that was a case where i think there was a, a real like public safety discussion so yeah that that was more of a public safety sort of situation um and part of the reason they couldn't move the trash area further back um was because of and, and away from the street was because of the narrowness of the available space on the parcel. If they moved the trash back towards the back and shifted their parking spaces forward, the trash truck wouldn't then be able to get to the trash location. So it was sort of a combination of um, factors. So you had the same thing that you have in this case where the parcel was already developed. You already have a big building up towards the front just you know and and taking up space you're not going to change where that building is um but you had the added factors of the public health and safety the you know being able to have um accessible get to it and have it actually work with the trash truck because this was a larger development a multi-unit building um so there are some similarities, but also some added factors in that prior one. Um, I, I had another question here. Um, with the side, have you have you spoken to the neighbors on the um, on the uh, the side setback, Justin? I mean, is that is that relevant? Are they? I mean, maybe no, I don't know those neighbors, um, okay. and I have not spoken to them. They're the ones with the pergola, though. So if they say anything. Yeah, some words okay. for them. Not worried about them. All righty. <laughs> that's that's also that's the crew that plays um that plays jazz like every Thursday on Liberty Street. So they're probably pretty chill, is my yeah, guess. <laughs> you know, like the big band music. It's awesome. It's so great. I think it's I, Wednesdays, maybe. I do hear it periodically. Um so other thoughts from board members about I mean, I'm kind of sort of feeling um the same as Rob sort of uh iterated that that it looks like there might be ways to make this so that it complied a lot more than it does in this in this particular instance. Um, I am certainly willing to hear what other board members have to say. Or uh, Brian? Yeah, um, I agree with that. Uh, I just simply had a question to start, which is that in the detailed plan that was presented with some dimensions, including setbacks, um, there's not a distance from the house to the rear of the proposed carport. Um, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But looking at the image, I'm curious if the existing pavement goes beyond the edge of the rear edge of the house. And if so, how far into the rear yard, let's say? The answer is yes. Um, can you bring up the, the picture? The, the yep. picture I drew. 
Uh, I can also do a see. Google image too if you no, need me to. It's, it's blocked by the um, by trees. I think, I'm ninety percent sure the angle from the Google image is no good. Uh, uh, maybe street, maybe street view will give you uh, will give us hold, some insight. Hold on, I think it was if in my staff report, I think I pulled up stuff from my GIS mapping software. Are you guys uh, seeing the the PDF yeah. or are you seeing my mapping software? PDF. Uh, PDF. Okay, so give me one second, because I think I stuck an image in the staff report. I think it was a little clearer on our GIS software. Yep. Um, so, hold on, let me switch the share screen. Sorry if this makes people dizzy. Um, so this is the roof line here. Mm -hmm which sticks out further than the house. So the house looks like it comes down here, but here's pavement back in here. Yeah, so it's a touch. It's not a ton, but there is. It's almost like walkway plus, because there used to be a door there. So Meredith, where your cursor is, if you move your cursor southeast, um, as we would interpret southeast on this map, um, and then a little bit right, a little bit east. <laughs> so right there, there's actually a door, um, a defunct door for the house. So it used to open that they they did some construction on this at some point, but there was a door freestanding, maybe five feet off the ground that doesn't have a um, what do you call it a um, egress that doesn't have an egress anymore. And so yeah, so I think that that used to go down into like the walkway back there to do something. So yes, there is a bit, but it's not a ton. I mean, I would guess what's a standard walkway five feet, something like that, four feet probably. Okay, thanks. Um, I guess just to wrap up my question and comment, it's uh, I agree that there are probably a couple ways it could be brought in a conformance, and I think two maybe two suggestions for the for a future application would be possibly to only be requesting one setback, which requires a variance. Um, and also possibly entertain the idea of conforming by making it a single uh, car carport rather than almost two car carport. That certainly seems to be the general feedback of the evening. I think that's correct. Meredith, um, I'm just going to throw this out here because the board does have a couple of options here if they want. Um. So there's the motion at the end of the staff report, right, which would be a yay or an A tonight. They could also theoretically continue the application if Justin felt like he wanted to try and redesign what he was asking for because he doesn't feel like he can get what he's first asking for tonight. If you guys wanted to continue it to the next meeting and he thought he could do some redesign to reduce the variances being asking for asked for if the board thinks that they might be willing to look at something that wasn't asking um, for three I'm, variances. I don't know. I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to adjust the the possibilities here and stuff. Um, so uh, yeah, but let me just freeze you so I can narrow the issues. I um I don't think I would come back asking for another variance. I think this is all or nothing. I'll just rebuild it to conform. If we're not going to get the variance, I'll just like we'll figure something out to rebuild it to conform. There's uh, mostly just because of the time, not because I don't like you lovely people, but I'd like to get something in place before the winter starts. So, um, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll make a general comment. I think it's clear that uh, one carport would confirm conform, but looking at you know it is a large home and you have. Uh, you know, you have a, a lot of people living there who, you know, need space for more than one car. I just want to put it out there as we're thinking about, you know, this is a, it's a street in an area with a lot of multifamily. And so I think it's beneficial for households to be able to accommodate more than one car, especially with, um, you know, the winter snow clearance, uh, meaning that the, the streets aren't available for parking at certain times of year. So. Okay. Good point. Brian, did you have something else? Um, yeah, I was just trying to kind of um, follow what Meredith has said and, and or, or rather what um, Justin had said, which was to suggest that 
if you wait a month, you may still have time to build something. If you, um, uh, and, and, um, but obviously we can't make any promises about anything, but just trying to throw it out there from an op more of an optimistic perspective about saying, if you wait a month, you still might have time to put something up and it, you know, might be just enough time to, you know, obviously you have to draw a line and say, I'm not going to wait any longer from this point. Um, maybe it's worth it to, you know, pull the thing closer to the street or well, something I, like that. Um, it's right, a, and the other thing is that if they do, um, if they do, I mean, I think Justin just said pretty clearly that he can make it within compliance, you know, and have to and change it around and that his, you know, he just wants to get it done. And so he wouldn't even have to come back to a second meeting at this point. He wouldn't come back on the 20th if we wanted to continue it. Um, that his preference is to just either get it or not get it um, this evening is what I heard. No, I, I heard that too. And I just wanted to politely say that, you, you, you know, if, especially if it's not the 20th, I mean, I'm, that's not even a month. You're talking about two weeks from now revisiting this and having something that's modified in front of everybody to then make a final decision, it still may provide enough time to make plans and get something built before real winter starts. So, so I, I guess I'm a little concerned about that. Um, I mean, I, I do think that if he wanted to do that, that we would certainly try to accommodate that, but also that one of the primary issues here was um was that it sort of uh just had a kind of a singular aspect to it would be much handier to have it wider and that we were talking about you know um, meredith you know iterated that you know with a um, ada issue or i think or rob said it with an ada issue or some other sort of overwhelming issue um that, that we might consider but but um to tell them to come back in two weeks if we're not sure that we would grant, you know, I mean, I just, uh, I mean, I'm not sure that enough would change on it so that we would grant a variance. Um, you know, the variance doesn't seem like it meets the standard, you know, the way the request doesn't seem to meet the standards for the variance. So, I mean, just, Justin knows more about what that would look like for him, but I wouldn't want to, I mean, I, I, I can't see what would change enough. Right. Well, okay. Let me just clarify then what I'm thinking. And this would be the last thing from me because I feel like this is, I'm trying talking. to seek a solution, but nobody else is, uh, everybody's saying yay or nay, but that's fine. We can go yay or nay. It's just this plan that's being proposed does not indicate where the bay window is, which means that the relation, the actual proposed location of the carport is not completely understood as it relates to the house and what the limitations on the site are. And I think, you know, let me just ask the question to the board. If the carport was shifted forward so that a rear setback was being complied with, but then a side yard setback was then now at three and a half feet rather than five feet, which is indicated as the minimum in the report, would this be something that we would at least be willing to weigh in on again? Not to say that we would approve it, but would it be a step in the right direction? And would the indication of where that bay window is, as this carport relates both to the bay window, the rear of the house, and also the minimum 10-foot rear yard setback, would those factors reoriented here, re-trawn, would that help us make a better decision? That's my question. Well, I guess, uh, go ahead, I had, Ron. I had a follow up to some of that. I, I, the, bay, the bay window, I'm not quite sure exactly, you know, how that fits, but I, I think. Well, just to yeah. indicate what is possible, Rob. Okay, let, let Rob speak. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but um, I think that when I spoke earlier about not meeting the criteria, I think clarified it. I was really thinking more about not the setback, um, you know, we, um, variance request, but the um, the impervious. I think the board's got some pretty good um, precedent that we're willing to be lenient on setback under certain conditions. I think um, I think if it's the public right of way, we've asked for sort of input from public works. Um, I think that you know 
weigh in from the adjoining property owners on that um, is is reasonable. Um, I think that the you know the the impervious. I think it's important not to lose sight of sort of the reason behind the red. You know, it relates to drainage and stormwater in the city as a whole. Um, and um, it's that that's the one I'm hung up on. Um, maybe if the structure was completely over the existing driveway, just covering existing pavement, um, I think it'd be <laughs> it'd be kind of a moot mo point. Um, and so um, that, but that I don't know. I just hope that piece doesn't get missed about um, you know the the reasons behind the impervious um, calculation and that reg reg regulation, and you know maybe thinking of the sense that if we were uh, review this, this was part of like a major site plan deal where there was all sorts of stormwater improvements and other types of infrastructure and things going on the site. We have a lot more things to like sort of like weigh the balance of the entire proposal as to like what the you know what the, what the benefit is, um, and we don't have that opportunity here. Um, but I guess my my point being is that I was not saying that I don't see criteria here for the setback waiver, but I, um, you know, I don't see an issue with the setback waivers. I think we could we could make that work with this proposal. Um, it's the, the impervious that um, I feel like maybe our options haven't been exhausted. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Got to ask the question to understand. Brian, for Brian did you did you want to speak? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Great. Go for it. Right. Sorry. I thought I was muted for a second. The driveway is paved right now. Yes. Pavement, blacktop. Okay. Yes. Just, just asking the question for myself as a citizen, the whole city of Montpelier, the zoning regulations, is that considered permeable right now? And if you were to build on top of it, is it considered, um, adding to an impermeable surface? Is that the point that was being made earlier? I'm really confused. Meredith, <laughs> Meredith wants to answer yeah. this question. Sure. I'm waiting for the chair. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, Thank you. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Sharon. Um, so, so one, uh, impervious surfaces are surfaces that shed water that don't allow infiltration. Um, the current proposal is putting a roof over some areas that are currently permeable where water goes through. I understand, I think, Brian, that you're trying to say pulling it back, getting it only over the driveway. Um, what I'm going to do here is sort of twist this whole thing around on y'all um, because the the one of the big criteria here is that granting the variances is necessary to enable the reasonable use of the property. And it sounds like, and, and I'm sorry, Justin, you're having to go through as we work through all of this. Um, it sounds like Justin has some ideas of how to shift this so he can create a conforming carport of one shape or another, even if it's not the ideal carport that they really, really want, which is what they proposed. So it sounds to me like the variances aren't necessary to build a carport for the reasonable use of the property. They can still build one. It just won't be this exact one. That's where I'm getting to after all this conversation. I don't make the decision, um, but I think getting into the nitty gritty about the very the the setback specifically and how to make it work right now is probably spinning wheels that don't need to be spun when it's really about can a carport be designed that meets the regs? Sounds yes, like is what it sounds like. Um, so you know, unfortunately. Justin's application came in when I was out with COVID. Um, and so Justin and I weren't able to sit down and have this whole big conversation ahead of time before the application all came through and the public hearing notice went out. Um, uh, but I think also Justin really wanted to see if he could get this carport because it was already started and it's exactly what his they tenants want. They want. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like they won't get exactly what they want, but they'll get something. And Justin and I can probably work with the regs to find out what we can fit in right. um and unfortunately it just means that some of that construction is probably going to come come down but um I, I i just don't want you all going off in the woods yeah. versus staying on the path of what the criteria are right i mean the suggested Catherine? motion oh, Catherine. I was, Catherine, Catherine, you've made it clear that you think you could 
construct one that is in compliance with the regs. You think you could construct one the size that your tenants need with space for two cars for people working two jobs in two different locations? Um, I haven't explored that exact question. I don't want to suppose I'm not under oath, so maybe, maybe not. Um, it's going to be, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's possible that we could shorten the width. It's possible the width is reduced by a foot on each side. Then maybe we get there, right? Like, I mean, it's 19 feet wide, two by fours or four inches. So you get 18 feet. How, how wide are cars? Six feet, seven feet. So like maybe, right? And then you got to pull in, so you want a little bit extra. So um, the answer, Catherine, is um, maybe, and maybe I haven't explored it enough. So wish okay. I could do you better than that. No, that, that's fine. That's just my, you know, as we're thinking about what your path forward is, I think there's, yeah, Meredith did summarize the situation and the goal here is to support uh, the compliance with the regs. But yeah, it's functionally, to me, it's functionally a different structure. If it's for one car versus two, you obviously have a larger, uh, you know, group of tenants right now, but that could also be um, the case in the future too, for other occupants of the house when, whenever the, the, you know, whatever the future needs are. So. Okay. Yeah. I suppose the, um, the, that's a grander philosophical discussion. That's probably for the city council. Okay. Um, Rob. Yeah, I guess um, I can discuss it. Um, I've motioned to to continue this to the next meeting. Um, gives the applicant time to decide whether they withdraw their application and they don't need it, um, or um, we review uh, more information at the next, uh, you know, at the, the next meeting. Um, if you know whichever direction uh, uh, is needed, based on after he distills the information that uh, you know he got this evening and our feelings. That's actually not a bad idea because then if he withdraws, he could apply his permit fees to the administrative, potentially. We might be able to finagle that. I think we've done that before. We have a motion. I, I second yeah. that motion. Second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Just have one last comment for, I think it sounds like Meredith is going to work with Justin to figure this out um, in the interim. And they'll probably cross this bridge, but another piece of information I think would be valuable on the site plan is just seeing um, the width of the current driveway, you know, kind of indicating the shape of the driveway. Um, just seems like a very critical and basic piece of information as it relates to a carport structure. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any further okay. discussion? I'll make one more further discussion for point for okay. um, one more point. Yeah. And this is more philosophical for Meredith. You know, I think like the goal is really that we don't want to see variances, right. That the zoning uh, allows for the, the, you know, productive use of the properties. And I do think um, as there's like increased uptake on accessory dwelling units, more multifamily, like there'll be more scenarios like this where there's like create interest in creative uses for parking and space that's set back from the street so we should um you know right now we need to focus on this application but i think it's a data point in terms of what future needs of the neighborhood could be and yeah we all see how much time it takes just for this one variance too right so it's like we want to yeah have a smooth process so yep that's a very good point um, so let's do this, uh, I think, by roll call. Um, so we've got a motion and a second. Um, Brian, how do you vote? I'm sorry, I missed that. How do I vote? Yeah. Nay. On the wait, you, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm confused. Restate okay. the motion. Rob, would you want to restate the motion? The motion is to uh, continue to the next... Oh, regular okay. scheduled DRB meeting. Sorry, I seconded it. Now we're going to vote on it. So I obviously am in favor of it. So. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Sorry, that was confusing for me too, but I support okay. this idea. Alex? I support it. Okay. Catherine? I support. Rob? Yes. And I am also a yes, so that is unanimous. That we will so, so the 
the motion was that this will be continued to the next time. Um, if Justin finds himself no longer needing a variance, um, then Meredith sounds fairly hopeful that she can get his money reapplied in a more appropriate fashion, and we won't see him on the 20th. Um, and if not, we'll see you on the 20th. Yeah, so, Justin, did you understand that? Yes, I understood. Okay. No, no, no. Sometimes the whole, like... I was on the CBPSA, the, the police review committee. <laughs> yeah. I know how these things work. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in the office tomorrow. Um, let me, like, feel free to shoot me an email. Tell me when's a good time to talk. Um, cool. I, you know, happy to work with you on this. I'm really sorry I was out so sick when you got this in through Audra and... Like the the public notice was already gone, so we didn't get a chance to work one on one on this one, um, no, so that don't. I could give you a sense of the chances of getting the variance. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think we could probably find a way to reapply the funds if we come up with a way to get you the garage that you want, or we do our best to to tweak this around. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Super interesting. Appreciate all yeah. your insight and your thoughtfulness about the whole situation. Thank you. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Okay, so we have um, minutes to review from the 10 uh, October 2nd meeting. Um, has everybody had a chance to look at those? Uh, yes. I, I looked at them and I didn't uh, find any issues with them. Yes, I reviewed no, no issues either. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, minutes from the October 2nd, 2023 DRB meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimously passed and approved the meetings. Um, do we have the, do, um, do we have somebody on the schedule for the 20th, Meredith? We do. Um, it is, it, it's, it's a conditional use, but it really shouldn't be that difficult. Um, it's for a, a new office space at 36 College Street, so College Hall, owned by VCFA. Um, but everything that the VCFA has been doing in there falls under the um, uh, academic institution. And so technically, it's a change of use for them to rent out part of that space to um, a political office. And it currently falls under what we call office definition, which is current conditional use and mixed use residential. Um, and FYI that the proposal is to change all of that in the zoning amendments that will hopefully be adopted by January or February. Um, the office use will actually disappear and become part of personal and professional services, right. um, which Excellent. will be approvable all over the place, um, including, you know, medical offices, things like that, things that don't rise to medical clinic or hospital, medical office, dentist office, things like that, um, and political offices. Okay. Um, but when you get a chance, uh, I think those new draft regulations will get posted probably by next week because it's going to go before planning commission. There's a lot of tweaks and things that I think are going to make things better for the board. Um, and you may be seeing fewer applications in some cases. Well, that's that's always a good thing. Um, I guess the other thing I just wanted to say that I thought we worked really well together tonight, that there was a lot of interest and a lot of comments, and we got a lot of different perspectives on it. But I would really appreciate it as the chair if we tried to work through me so that um, it's not a big deal when it's a little application like this and it's just us online. I feel like it, it works pretty simply. But if we were to get a bigger meeting and we didn't run it through the chair, then it gets really chaotic. So I would just encourage people to do that. Um, just because I feel like it'll make for a better meeting. Uh, All right, guys. Darren, I'm still familiarizing myself with the process. So okay. apologies for not. And honestly, question the questions are, first. questions are yeah. always great. What was I was finding a little tricky was you calling on the next person. You know, if I, if I'm you know, like, you're going, okay, right. that, that's what I right. said. And she wants to talk about it now. So I'm going to talk to her, you know, so just trying to keep it going through there so that it all just works a little bit better, you know? Agreed. And I just was responding to what I was saying. And apologies yeah. for that. So no worries. No worries. All I, right. I do have one last question about the carport <laughs> for everybody to think about. It, it's nothing to do with design, really. It's just a zoning question. Um, 
Merit, and this is for Meredith. So Sharon, can I ask Meredith a question? <laughs> yes, you may. Okay. Please speak. Uh, Meredith or anyone else who's knowledgeable about this, is are there any um, um, allowances to anything, uh, it, it, permeable coverage exceptions, if the carport has a green roof, for example? Is there um, it, like yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think. It, He's not going to build that. I'm they're not going about, to do this, but yeah. yes, if if someone can show that what they're doing is not going to be shedding the water right yeah. off, yeah. then we will count that as a permeable surface. So, um, but it would require data, right? So there there are permeable. Um, pavers there at one point the Gary residence's um, addition for their memory care unit the original plan actually had a green roof and so the water would be contained in that area and used and so for that situation we were discussing the theory of having that not count as impermeable at least the areas on it that were green mm -hmm. so they were going to get sort of a reduction on what that what that was but um we haven't had the five years i've been here we have not had a single green roof get permitted so i ha can't tell you exactly what we would be looking for on that we would probably end up going and trying to reach out somewhere out west or somewhere where they do these green roofs more often to try and figure out what kind of data they use um but yeah i mean that we might do that it's not there's no like specific allowances in the regs. It all comes down to what the definition of impermeable is. And yeah. there's a clause in there about like getting proof that something is not impermeable. That's where we would right. draw the line, right? It's where okay. we get, where, where I actually am allowed to get a little creative. <laughs> okay. This is kind of the origin of the question about is there blacktop there now? And then, you know, thinking about it in reverse, if it's not, if a green roof isn't required to create permeable or water collecting um, air um, site area, then is building a roof structure over? It's a roof. Right. It's, that's part of that's one of the definitions. He's not saying that the roof over the pavers is new impervious surface. None of us are saying that. Part of yeah. the roof is over what is currently grass. Right, but I didn't. It was never indicated how much, and I think that was kind yeah. of. Yeah, it was. He right. gave a he he gave a total square footage that was being added that is not the square footage of the carport. It's in the application. I don't remember exactly what it is, but he gave an exact amount that is going to be would be grass that is going to be covered by the carport. Okay, I I didn't see that. I apologize. I yep, read that's it. why that's why we got to the percentages. I double checked his numbers. I didn't go out and versus, measure. Right. That's the sixty-six out, versus yeah. sixty percent. Is that right? Yeah. The 66% yep. versus 60. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that's curious because the carport itself is only 400 square feet. So Wait, the carport was adding 174 square feet of impervious surface, if I remember correctly. And it's on his application. If you okay. go to the zoning attachment, I believe that's where it is. All right. Well, apologies because I it's must okay. have missed something else that was being added. Because if the carport's only four hundred square feet, right? He's, it, you're saying he's in excess of the of the when added body. to the rest of the impervious surface already existing on the site. Yeah, right. he's yeah. adding 174, I think, square feet of impervious right. surface is what the application is saying. I'm trusting his numbers. Right. Right. So he's already so, in excess of it then. Right. He's already yeah. in excess. So adding more increases the nonconformity yeah. beyond right. what is allowed through a waiver. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I understand now. I, I missed that earlier. Mm -hmm. I was getting <laughs> fixated on those numbers while we were talking, but I was just trying to make it make sense when I was looking at the actual size of feel, the Feel free to always okay. email me ahead yeah. of meetings um, or, Today, or give me a yeah. call. Today I read this. Just Five minutes before the meeting. Oh, Full okay. disclosure. So that's where oh, okay. some of the confusion came from. Anyway. Alex did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, Alex did. No, I was just following up on a tangent to the green roof, but had he come with a proposal that said, we're going to take up the macadam and put down permeable driveway material, 
that yeah. would have changed the calculus, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what we did. It's, we took yeah. out the cadam and put in gravel and blocks with large holes in them. Exactly. That's We've had other people do that where they're adding to the impervious surface in one area, but they subtract enough somewhere else to still stay within their max percentage. Right. Um, but I think, you know, with this situation, they're, they're not, that's, that's more expense than, than they can right. manage. Right. And, but yeah, we've had people do that. We recommend that to people all the time. Right. And I have to say the macadam on that driveway looks really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it does, you know, it's it? got like an 18 month half-life around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and Meredith, did you just make note? Um, I think that Catherine had a really good point about, uh, about this issue coming up more and more as we work on our infill, yeah. as we work on additional dwelling units that, that, you know, Catherine's got a very good point that people are going to need cars. Um, and so I don't know if that's on the planning list somewhere or, but just add it to the list. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just going to flag for you planning commission. A lot of them really wanted to like tell people they didn't need to have any off street parking. Um <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which which just blows my mind, and you know, right. you gave DPW conniptions. Um, so, uh, but I will I will raise that as do you know it it becomes an issue, right? Because setbacks are partly to prevent the snow from ending up on someone else's property, or all your snow banks ending somewhere where when they melt, they go on some it the flow messes up someone else's drainage. Um, that's what a lot of those setbacks are for, for those, for the garages. Um, but I will raise it to see if there's something we can do um, as a way to, to find ways to allow that covered parking. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. it's, it's a good thing. It's also, it technically it's not essential. I mean, that's the, even though you really want it and yes, it feels essential at times, I, I don't know is the law would support that. So we'll have to see what we can come up with. Yeah. All right, Catherine. I, I want to say, yeah, for, um, thanks for, yeah, the plus one on that, Sharon. And, you know, I like personally, I'm all about trying to reduce car dependence in use, but I just think from a market perspective, as people are, yeah, having more ADUs or making the choice to convert to multifamily, like there is going to be more of a market expectation of the parking. So I think we just have to be prepared for that. And, you know, hey, longer term, maybe there's going to be some amazing uh, car share somewhere, right, where we can all just go there and it'll be available at exactly the right time. Um, I'm ready for that. So, you know, if we just had a parking garage downtown. Well, I wasn't here for that one. So <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. All right. All right. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah, second. Yep, second. Thanks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.